Hi, this is Michael Fisher for SavingAndInvesting.com and welcome to the video on the illustrated balance sheet. And what we're going to do is look in this video is look at the balance sheet in a bit more detail. First of all, the balance sheet is also known as the statement of a financial posi of the of financial position. And what it does is it summarizes for a company at a point in time, for example, at the end of a financial year, such as December 31st of a given year, it summarizes what the company owns and how the things that the company owns have been financed. So it provides the assets of the company, typically on the one side of the balance sheet, and the way that those assets have been financed on the other side of the balance sheet through debt and equity. The uh, balance sheet captures this at a point in time, such as the end of a financial year, unlike the income statement, which captures the information regarding the company's operations over a period of time, such as a financial year. So the first thing is the balance sheet captures this information, and it's a snapshot at a point in time. And it captures the assets and how they're financed at a point in time. Now, the balance sheet would clearly be of interest to a lot of different parties. It would be of interest to investors. It could be of interest to people that are, um, are looking at lending money to the company as, as investors, as uh, to potentially to stockholders and owners of the company, um, obviously to banks. It could be of interest to the management of the company to see where there's potential, perhaps to sell assets or to reduce debt. Um, and it gives, and we'll go through some of the items and, and what they illustrate um, through this example. Now, first of all, what we can see is on the left side of the balance sheet, we have the assets. Um, and typically, these are listed from the most liquid to those that are least liquid. And that's clearly what's been done in this uh, illustrative example. We start with current assets, um, and these are assets that are typically more liquid. Um, and that the company um, can turn into cash relatively readily. So we have things like cash and cash equivalents here. We have securities, accounts receivable, um, merchandise which can be sold, and prepaid expenses. So things that can be turned into cash relatively quickly, um, and that's the way they've been categorized here. And then secondly, we have fixed assets, things like investments, machinery, buildings and land that would take longer to sell. So first of all, on the left side of the balance sheet, we have all of the assets. The other thing that would be worth noting at this point is that clearly the balance sheet, or the statement of financial position, um, balances. The balance sheet balances. So on the left side, and hence the name, we have the assets, which in this case are 155 in million, so 155 million, um, which balance with 155 million and the way that they've been financed on the right side. On the left side we have the assets, on the right side we have liabilities and shareholders equity, in other words debt and equity, the two main ways in which a company can finance its operations and the purchase of its assets. Um, let's move on then to the right side quickly. On the right side as we said we have debt, in other words what we've called here liabilities, and again in this case it's been structured from that debt which is most liquid to that which is least liquid. So we have short-term debt, we have long-term debt, giving uh, a, a sum for total current liabilities, which would be liabilities that are due um, within one year or less, perhaps, and long-term liabilities, which are long-term debt in this case, and deferred income taxes. Now, a lot of these entries can vary, and often there might be notes accompanying the financial statements and the balance sheet with further detail on particular items. But the important thing is to understand the general structure of the balance sheet and how it operates. Um, it has these three parts, the assets, the debt, and the equity, or the assets, the liabilities, and the equity. It always balances, and in this case, as is often the case, uh, both the items on the left and the right side have been categorized in terms of the, those being most liquid at the top, and those being least liquid at the bottom. Now what that obviously allows one to do is if I look at this balance sheet for example I can see that the short-term debt i.e. the debt falling due within a short period of time is relatively low. Now if this lump number was very very large i.e. a hundred million and we only had for example 20 million of cash and we knew from the income statement that the company wasn't generating that much profit a very high number here for short-term debt might be a reason for concern. The other thing uh, we could perhaps say is that if we have 
um, very high debt levels on the right side generally across both long-term and short-term debt and at the same time a lot of cash then perhaps it would be in the company's best interest to reduce some of its debt particularly if it was at a high rate of interest to reduce the amount of leverage. Now these are all things that we can see from the balance uh, sheet and things that can allow an analyst, a portfolio manager, an investor or even the management to look at how the company is operating, how the company is financing it, itself and where there might be areas either for concern or where there might be opportunities to improve operations. Now as we said the, comp the balance sheet will always balance and if there are any changes on the balance sheet which, which definitely can take place during a financial year then these would be reflected in the balance sheet. So for example if the company were to sell some of its buildings and land which are currently valued at 30 million sold 10 million of those and turned that into cash what would happen? Well we would end up the buildings and land would effectively go down for the year to 20 and the cash would go up to 30 and in the end the balance sheet would still balance. So in here we've had a direct sale of buildings and land for an illustrative example um, turning that into cash. What if the company then used now, these, now that it had 30 million dollars of cash to reduce its short-term debt from 10 to 5? What would happen? Well the cash and cash equivalents would go from 30 to 25 and the short-term debt would go from 10 to 5. Now what's important is that there would have to be a change and as we can see here the overall balance sheet has effectively shrunk slightly. Previously we had 155 million of assets and 155 million of liabilities and shareholders equity. Because we've used cash to reduce reduce the cash and the debt on both sides by 5 million, um, we've now shrunk the balance sheet slightly um, and the company has um, 150 million on either side but most importantly the company is still uh, the balance sheet still balances and we could in a number of things here could take place we could sell securities and pay down some long-term debt the company could make uh, a net profit in a financial year and retain those earnings in which case the retained earnings line would increase and if it if those earnings were kept as cash then this line would also increase the cash and cash equivalents again both of the the total assets and the total liabilities and shareholders equity would rise and at the end the balance sheet would still balance and we can look at the balance sheet over periods of time so the balance sheet in this case has been prepared for the December 31st at the end of a financial year we could look at a balance sheet the balance sheet of prior years and we could look at the balance sheets uh, even project balance sheets going forward and look at how the company is developing and from the management standpoint management standpoint where the company might have opportunities to reduce um, certain items or improve the profit improve um, its debt position or is the debt too high and so forth so we can see how the balance sheet is a very useful financial statements one of the key financial statements it provides a snapshot of the company at a point in time as to what its assets are and how those assets have been financed in terms of debt and equity it's of interest to a number of parties including management and investors it always balances and if there are any changes on the balance sheet it will always balance subsequent to those changes